I don't know if this ever happens to anybody else, but every now and again, I get an intense craving for a donut. And not just any donut, a Krispy Kreme donut. One lazy Saturday morning, I was having this exact craving, and I decided to reminisce with my husband and share the story about the first time I ever had a Krispy Kreme donut. Back when I was a teenager, I would go with all of my friends to a place called the Block of Orange. And you're probably not familiar with it since it's in Southern California, but it's basically an outdoor shopping mall with different stores and restaurants and even a movie theater. But we were never going for any of those things. We were going to see and be seen, as my mom used to say. At the time, a brand new Krispy Kreme donut shop had opened and everybody was talking about it. One fateful summer evening, we rounded the corner into the block of orange and we saw that the line was not too long. We were so excited to try it. So as I slid the door of the minivan open, the sweet aroma of fresh fried donuts hit my nose before my converse clad feet even hit the pavement. We scurried over to the line, which is quite a feat for a bunch of lanky, awkward, brace face, high water jeaned teenage girls, but we hurried over as quickly as we could. And once we got into the line, everyone was buzzing with anticipation and excitement for what was ahead of us. As we inched forward, we finally stepped inside the building and we were amazed because you could actually watch how these donuts were being made. We got to see the process from donut formation all the way through frying them and finally that perfect sugar glaze. Once we finally got to the front counter, an employee greeted us wearing that white paper iconic hat with the Krispy Kreme logo stamped on the side and he held up a fresh tray of piping hot donuts right off of the conveyor belt. I remember that moment like it was yesterday. I held that warm donut in my hand. I took my first bite and my teeth sunk in and I swear that bite just disappeared and melted in my mouth immediately. That changed my entire donut experience forever. That was the donut that I would compare against all other donuts. As I wrapped up my story and floated down from my nostalgic moment, I looked at my husband and I asked, have you ever had a Krispy Kreme donut? He says, no, I don't think I've had one fresh like that. When I was in college, we used to go to a donut shop called Harlow's. I waited. Sometimes he puts in dramatic pauses into his stories. He looked at me, I looked at him, and finally I asked, is that it? Is that the end of the story? He says, yeah. Y'all, I lost it. I laughed so hard because I had told this histrionic story about my donut experience and he just tells me about the donut shop he went to in college. Now we had a really good laugh about it, but it pointed out something really important to me, that there is a difference between telling a story and sharing facts. As I did a little bit more research into what makes a great story, I read the book Stories That Stick by Kendra Hall. In her book, she goes in depth into what makes a great story and how to choose the right story for your speech. But I wanna go over the four components that make up a great story. Number one, an identifiable character. Number two, authentic emotion. Number three, a specific moment. And number four, specific details. I'm gonna quickly compare and contrast my story with my husband's story to show those in action. First, you need an identifiable character. You want to describe a character that your audience can relate to and can understand. In my husband's story, he shared that he was in college, but a little bit more detail would have helped us to understand who he was in college. Was he a jock? Was he a broke college student? You wouldn't know unless you knew him personally. In my story, I hinted that I was an awkward teenager with braces and high water pants. And even if you yourself weren't an awkward teenager, you can probably understand that character and relate to them a little bit. Second, you need authentic emotion. It doesn't have to be drawn out emotion like you're in a drama, but you do need to express the emotion. In my husband's story, there was almost no emotion. We don't know whether it was a good experience or a bad experience for him. 
In my story, you could likely feel the excitement and anticipation as I waited to take my first bite of the donut. Third, you need a specific moment. The specific moment is either going to be a specific place or a very specific time period to help draw the readers in and allow them to walk in that experience with you. In my husband's story, the, his specific moment could have either been in college, a specific time period, or Harlow's, which was the name of the donut shop. But again, more detail would have helped that to come to life for us. In my story, I brought you into the Block of Orange in Southern California and the brand new Krispy Kreme donut shop. I also explained my teenage years. So those were too specific, a time and a place to bring you in. Finally, the fourth one, specific details, is arguably the most important. You want to describe, sp use specific and descriptive imagery in order to make your story come to life and to use those images that your audience can understand. I think that was the biggest difference between my story and my husband's story. He shared the, the facts about what happened, but I went into great detail about my experience so that you yourself might remember maybe the first time you had a Krispy Kreme donut. Let's recap. You need to tell a great story, an identifiable character, authentic emotion, a specific moment, and specific details. It's with the use of these four components that you draw your audience in and build connection that you wouldn't have otherwise had. We are all natural storytellers as human beings. I recommend that the next time you're sharing a story in your speech, you use these four components in order to become the compelling, engaging, and persuasive speaker that you were created to be. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm gonna go hunt down a Krispy Kreme donut, and I suggest you do the same. Thank you.